you're listening to the Neil Ampty Show. My name is Joey, and I'm joined by Neil. Hello. Uh, we've given Paul an extended holiday because of exertions at the World Cup, which means that this week we will be joined for our preview pod by Laurie. All right, mate. And by Dom. Hiya. Uh, hey, guys. Um, League One, for a start, good. We'll come on to that. Uh, but World Cup, before we start. I assume you've all watched a bit of it. Neil? Caught it a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was all right, wasn't it, in the end? I'm... <laughs> I don't, weirdly, I don't think we played that well, but, you know, it's nice to get sort of excited about it all, and um, turns out it, it does still quite mean it, does mean a lot. I just think it was a team to get behind at last, weren't it? I, I thought they were all, it was quite, it was just nice to watch occasionally, wasn't it? Yeah, missing the James Madison, but other than that, it was... Do you know, I really thought that was the main thing. I thought that it was... Um, and even though I, I re- when he's on his game, I think Deli Ali is as good as this country's got. I adore him. I love how, pe- him, how, I love how petulant he is, and I love mm. how nasty he is. But I don't think I've seen that from him quite as much as you'd like over the last year or so. But I think it's Lingard and him that it fell down with, and possibly Henderson as well, although that's an unpopular opinion. Uh, <laughs> Laurie, thoughts? England team? Um, yeah, I would agree with what's been said. I didn't think we played that great football. I think my highlight of the World Cup was actually just following it kind of vicariously through CJ because oh, I'm yeah. much more interested in like 24 hour train journeys across the like wilderness of Russia than I am in like most of the games. Um, and so he provided a very interesting insight just because like the logistics of a World Cup to me just seem like like booking tickets and all like all that stuff is just like how does it all work but yeah it's interesting to see and also i think one of my favorite things germany just both of those games when they almost went out to sweden and then when they actually did go out i <laughs> don't i think i went more nuts for yeah. that than i did for the england it was just perfect it was so brilliant with neuer just like I don't know, just being so German, he was like, I can fix this as goalkeeper oh, with 2-0 yes. imagine, down and I can fix this. Imagine Why how angry... To him? You want to say that again? Why are they throwing it to him? That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely insane. Imagine, he might offer himself, but don't go for it. Imagine how angry you'd be as an outfield player seeing that a goalkeeper had come up and had pressed higher up the pitch than you <laughs> were. <laughs> <laughs> you'd just be like, what, what, what are you trying to say? Who does he think he is? What, I mean, asking for the ball. Is he is some sort of serious crosser? Is he is he is he that good? He's meant. Well, I remember to... the commentators were saying, "Oh, he's meant to be a good midfield player." He's like, yeah, what, good in like like a, a, a semi professional team. Yeah, maybe he wouldn't stand out, but he's not good in the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> but even just on a practical point, is why wouldn't he just? stand behind the defenders and go you need to push up further and then if they choose to push up maybe he could follow them back but to be more advanced than anyone else you just think you realize that you if they can't this isn't rush keepers yeah they can't fill in <laughs> for you keepers. um oh, sorry, on- my, final, my final good thing in the world cup was southgate screaming at the fans just shouting come on repeatedly with his waistcoat looking like kind of geography teacher gone feral that was just like the moment when i got like goosebumps and thought i love you a bit gareth for quite this. squeaky wasn't it they're always yeah. more squeaky than you imagine when they start screaming Do anybody remember chris stokes screaming at the end of the um <laughs> county game yeah I, yeah I know he's got quite a high voice but then he's screaming he's like come on it's like, <laughs> wasn't expecting it um world cup wise dom on the pitch did anything uh get better than the gamble throw-in that didn't work from the Iranian player. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, that was brilliant. It was just like he decided for the first time in his life that he was going to try that out in a World <laughs> Cup. Because it's, just, it's, it's like he did the full throw and goes, oh, wait, what am I supposed to do now? Oh, yeah, take, take a throw-in. <laughs> Is anyone old enough to remember Skinner and Badil when they used to do Phoenix from the Flames? What, Pele is shy? Uh, I can't remember that, that sort specifically. Of stuff, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was where they used to recreate them classic moments. Yeah. And the, the one that they did for that Zaire defender who legged it out oh, from the wall and kicked the ball away <laughs> is that when they did that, is they did his thoughts as they were doing it. And that he was his thoughts were like, 
I am going to be the first person to do it. <laughs> like, I have blown the lid off the game. And then when he gets booked, he's like, oh, shit. Like that. that was all that ran through my head when that player started like, throwing. Because he was just like, oh, mate, I didn't even make the touch line. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea, though, is it? Just go to the World Cup and... 90th he's, he's minute. He's not going to win it. Let's see what I can do to make my, get myself onto a video. Just, like, do a Roger <laughs> Miller. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't care what I'm just going. I'm, I'm at the World Cup. I'm going to do it. Just go for it. It was uh, it was fabulous. Okay, well that's a comprehensive World Cup roundup to um, to get us warmed up for the real football um, that's happening. We're back in League One, um, which is good, but it's also sort of not good. But that's a different conversation. We're going to try and do some questions that uh, will help us sort of succinctly preview this. Um, and we're going to fire straight into them. I've asked you to prepare some answers, guys. First off, I want to hear what you would st- what your starting eleven on Saturday would be. Um, and Dom, I'm going to ask you to go first. Phew. So, um, I think Robbins really needs to build this team around Tom Bayliss. And to a less extent, Tony Andrew, based on who's available at the moment, based on we haven't got a McNulty style striker in the team at the moment. Doesn't look like one's going to come before Saturday. Uh, Jody Jones is still injured. It's that creative hub between Tom Bayliss and Tony Andrew. And I think that works best in a 4 2 3 1 system, either with Bayliss playing deep in midfield, which could happen because a Gogo and Kelly aren't seemingly fully fit. Um, or it could be Bayless playing wide and Andrew playing just off the striker in the in the centre. I think that link up play between two of them is going to be a major difference maker. As for the rest of the team, Burge and Goal, uh, he's, he's a better keeper than O'Brien. That's, that's like pretty clear. Uh, Grimmer probably at right back ahead of Sterling, who I think will get blooded in slowly and possibly as a winger uh, from the bench later on. Hyam and Willis because Davis is suspended and McDonald doesn't seem to be on top form at the moment. Brown at left back ahead of Mason. Both were pretty impressive in the West Brom friendly that I saw last Saturday. But I think Brown's experience puts him ahead of them at the moment and then hopefully uh Bayes and Doyle in central midfield if a go-go is fully fit I can see that being Doyle and a go-go with Bayless on the right Andrew in the center and then on the left cutting in onto his right foot Reese Adesani who was another who caught the eye in West against West Brom and then Biamu up front because his his work rate his presence his link play up front that's going to be a really good uh, focal point for those three playing behind him to uh, play off. Uh, Laurie, big changes in your first 11 from what Dom is positing there? Well, Dom's blown a whole load of things wide open because I didn't realise Davies was um, suspended. I'd forgotten about that famous incident. Um, I really thought Jody would be ready as well, so our width is a real issue. I wouldn't have Alassani in the team just because I kind of thought he was going to be slowly blooded in because he's never played league football before but everyone seems to think he's going to be in the team um, and I suppose we kind of have to now because if Sterling's not going to play um, then we don't really have any natural width do we because I'm Andrews likes to play central no Shipley has, I feel very mean about not putting Shipley in the team considering I don't think everyone's forgotten Notts County away yet, but I would really want to have Shipley in the team. Maybe not for any logical reason, more just because I'm loyal. Um, But I find it hard to talk about the shape because I I have no... I I watched the crawley Stevenage game, whatever it was, that friendly, and we were playing the 5-3-2, and I don't know if he was just doing that because that was what fitted the players who were out there and that was how he wanted to fit Grimmer into the same team um, as other people as who was that lad who was playing right wing back Hickman Um, but we looked all over the place so I just I I don't know what we're going to play 
Um, Doyle has to play, doesn't he? Bayliss has to play. Um, Does Doyle have to play? I was well, I was thinking that, but I he's not going to drop him, is he? I don't, but I think he's going to have to manage him. I think is the main thing. And the question yeah. is, another year under his belt at a higher level. Does Doyle become that player that I've always wanted us to have that's the comes on with half an hour to go to just break, just to smash the game to pieces? I'm yeah. not sure whether he's going to... I really hope, you know, nobody loves Doyle more than me. I would love to think that he would play another 50 games for us this season and boss midfield is left, right and centre. But I think it would be... It's a leap to assume that he will definitely be first choice this season for me, especially when you sign a go-go when... He is such obviously a Doyle player, but with added red cards, which obviously great. <laughs> um, it, I think it just depends what kind of personality a go-go is as well, doesn't it? Like he may play like Doyle, but does he have that insane leadership that we just know? We were on that stinking run of like four games without a win or a goal, and they were all when Doyle was absent, and he just made such a difference. And I hope we're not that reliant on him this season. Um, and yeah, I hope Agogo can step into his shoes because I think there's a reason Pompey got rid of Doyle when they got promoted. Um, but back to, yeah, Bayliss. I hope to God he's still with us by the time, I think the window shuts after the first two games or after the first one game. Um, next Thursday. Next Thursday. So we will have played Oxford by then. Yeah. Yeah. Does everyone think he'll still be here? I I, th- I think so from from the sounds of it, um, but I suppose worry is that um, someone can just come in with a ridiculous bid. Of, what um, would be a ridiculous bid? Is he worth I, more than McNulty? I think en- yes. I think yeah. anything yes. above three million would be hard to turn down for him. I agree with you, but it would it would burn me up. More than any other player other than Madison leaving, I think, to see him go basically for anything. Because I feel like whatever he does this season, it's got to be an absolute stick on that he'll be worth more next year. I don't. Yeah. I just can't see him not be... He's got. If you look at that England nine, under-19 squad that he went away with, I think there's maybe one other player that's not playing for like at least top-end Premier League clubs, it's very unusual for them to look that far down the pyramid for a player to take away. And I know that it was because they didn't get to take Foden and all that, but it was still him that went. I just... He is, beyond question, absolutely class. And you don't get the impression that he's going to struggle to meet this level. You get the impression that he will just improve above it. I, it just would seem like false economy to sell him now. As but long we've as had he wasn't, exact I just, same discussion before, haven't we? But he I think that it's. Like but, that. but I, I and this is what I was going to go on to say. Ultimately, if he's agitating for a move, that's one thing. But if it's about us taking money, I think the Callum Wilson money I thought was smart. I thought that was, you know, even though it burnt me up, it was the right thing to do to take it. He's proved that he's had terrible injury problems since then, and we never knew whether he would do it again. Obviously, he did, but the, he's been injured a bunch. It was a, it was a, you know, a calculated risk to let him go for the money that we did. There's been other players that we've let go where it's damaged us, but ultimately, there's been pros and cons to it. But the, I think Salim Bayliss now would just be... It would be very, very, very annoying because I just don't think... I don't think we need to financially. And we must be in such a good position now compared to what we were six months ago because we have the Madison money and yeah. we have the Nolte money. Like That's got to be like three or four million quid that we have never had. Well, for long pre- and also presumably a few extra thousand season tickets sold. The playoffs must have swelled the coffers somewhat. The overall, do you know what I mean? There's just it, We must be in a, a reasonable, a better financial footing now than we have been in years. And I just, but like I say, I don't understand. I just think unless he says I want, I want out of here, which it doesn't really look like. No, it doesn't. Then I just, it wouldn't make any sense at all to sell him for, for really for anything other than sort of crazy, crazy money, which I think would probably be excess of five, six million. That I would... don't think our club can turn, could turn down no, even I... over three. Do you really? Yeah. I just I think, think you'd get. Yeah. I just think you'd get so. Many. Anyway, we're probably beating this to death. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Laurie, any other final things to talk about on yours before I move over to Neil? Assuming that Neil's had enough chance to find a pen and paper to do this on. No, I'm, I'm just, just I, Wikipedia. <laughs> I just 
will be it will be the most interesting team of the season, won't it? Because I think the preseason has been such a mixed bag, and by mixed bag I mean mouldy bag. Um, <laughs> that <laughs> who knows? There's a few nailed on. Like I'm pretty sure BMU would be nailed on. Um, I, I'm still concerned that signing JCH may not have been the right move, but I don't think that's that popular an opinion. Um, I worry about him this season because if he if he if he has a season this season like he did most of last, what like when was the last time he did anything good? Like it will have been an awfully long time. But I hope I hope he proves me wrong. Uh, well, yeah, quite. Neil, you're eleven. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening here. So we got a bunch of players and a bunch of new ones and. It seems like so you you could you stick with the formula that did what well for us last year vaguely and then you kind of you drop him some more but we've got I'm not picking this up we've got quite a few options haven't we when it comes to sort of kind of around the midfield and uh, sort of I just I, I don't know some of these so I like the look of this uh, Alisani guy I think um, in in lieu of Jody Jones you kind of feel like he he's the alternative. That sort of um, that um, that wide player creativity. I think you've got to play Tony Andrew. You've got to play Bayless. You've got to play Doyle. But then we we enter the realms of kind of what what formation are we playing? And I, I've been very intrigued by Robbins in pre-season with his um, keeping an eye on sort of um, the three-five-two or the five-three-two, whatever you want to call it, and just how he how he deals with that. And I I, I think he might go with it, which. Is odd because then you can You've got the question about where does Jack Grimmer play, and, and I, my my hunch is that he, he might go with it, and he'll do Jack Grimmer as um in the old Kyle Walker role. Yeah, which I think he, he'll tr- like to try and play. Which in many ways doesn't make uh, the, isn't too bad because I know a lot of people struggled with Grimmer from an attacking sense last year. Kind of felt like his final ball was lacking. So. But then again, some people have um, struggled with defensiveness. So uh, um, <laughs> yeah, but he's not here that. today. So uh... <laughs> no, oh yeah, true, uh, true story. Um, no, so I, I can't give you my eleven because I, I don't know. I don't know enough about the, some of these players yet. But what I am pleased with is kind of the fact that he has gone out and he's he's brought in quite a few players who who offer us options, like someone like Sterling uh, on probably wing back or potentially winger. Seems to work for me. Um, Abu Agogo, I mean, he was a great player last year, so you'd like to think he could come in and, and do a good job for us. But that's that's where you struggle because um, I don't know how you fit in um, Doyle, Bayless, Agogo, Andrew, kind of in, within the same dynamic because Andrew is the most number 10 player you'll ever see in your life. Yeah. So you have to play a formation which suits that. So. Yeah, I, I'm just interested. I'm, I really am. And it, it kind of takes me back to um, A.D. Bufford, one of his first games where I had no idea what he was going to do. And then he played Nathan Cameron and um, Ben Turner in defence. Oh, yeah. Which made no sense at all to anybody. And they were both immense. So I am, I'm looking forward to it. I like Tim for officer. I'm glad that you brought up the um, three at the back issue because... The only way that I can make sense of the players coming in and going out that I have so far, not the only way, but that I'm, I like to be dramatic, <laughs> is he's Brown and Sterling very specifically are wing backs first and foremost, yep. aren't they? So Brown, I think, yep. was a winger that's been converted into a left back via left wing back, but I think he's probably more happy at left wing back. Sterling is. Um, one of them, so it's. I find it quite jarring when you see it on Football Manager or Championship Manager, where a player can only play wing back. Yeah, and they can't play right back. <laughs> you can't play them. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> it depends exclusively on whether you've lost nine out of your last ten games and you've gone to wing back as so some sort of like mad yeah. emergency <laughs> move. Um, but the it, that seemed like a very calculated thing to me. But then equally then it looks like he's played a back four in the last two or three friendlies. Is that right? He was certainly a back four against yeah. West Brom, wasn't it? Yeah, but both halves. Um, maybe, so maybe it's options. But I, yeah, I, so, go on. So I was going to say, it just, it just when the when the strafe against West Brom and obviously the instructional base and Andrew and, and a few others, 
it just improved massively when it went to a system that was more recognisable as a four-two-three-one. That it just seemed to suit the players who are on the pitch. Again, it's, it's, it's about that link up between Bayless and Andrew, and just having pace around them that they can play off. Uh, Mason and Asani down the left were very enterprising in their combinations, and then weirdly had Jordan Thompson playing at right back who. If anyone's ever seen him, he's about six foot four. Confident young man. <laughs> yeah, he's huge. And uh, sort of held his own, sort of a very sort of Chris Stokesy fullback performance. But yeah, he sort of yeah held, held one side stable while the other side went really gung-ho. And that, that seemed to strike a nice balance with uh, Biamu playing as the focal point. Um, describing his fullback performance as Chris Stokesy is actually quite... Um enigmatically open I feel like that could be construed in a great number of different ways either that it was very good or like slightly below par or sort of utilitarian or that he was like better than you expected him to be I quite like the way that that's as open to interpretation how what what version of Chris Stokes are you looking at there I'd I'd say a physical presence at fullback Showed energy going forward. You'd Trying never, his hardest. <laughs> yeah, you'd never, you'd never back energy. Him, but, but cross, cross in. But by God, he tried. <laughs> Is anybody um, upset at the? Uh... Has he left? He's definitely gone. Yes, yeah. he's gone to Bury. Yeah. Oh, sorry, because he's still on the club website as well. Yeah, he's also <laughs> on. Highly broadly. He's also on the Right Move website that most of yes, the uh, yes. exiting <laughs> players are. What a beautiful house! It's a fantastic house. Um, they all live in the same house. That's League One money, that is. That, <laughs> that's that fuck you League One money. Yeah. He's, um, yeah, his house noticeably nicer than Ryan Haynes's. Um, but I suppose he had that big money move, didn't he, when he was a baby? Didn't he go to Bolton for like, uh, like actual money money? Oh, did that happen? Yeah, I think oh, when he was like yeah. 16, I think he got like a, like a, you know, like a, like an Adam Barton move. Oh, one of those, yeah. yeah. So, I tell you who has got a lot of money now. Well, we all know this, but James Madison. I'm hearing numbers being said to me, which are huge. Is that right? Man's rich, yeah. Well, he deserves every penny of it, obviously. Are you allowed to share them with us? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> write them down on a napkin and pass it around the table, if you would, please. I'll do it in a binary. Um, <laughs> uh, I haven't got a great deal to add to the starting 11 debate. Or any other debate, obviously, but um, I yeah. Other than like I say, I think I think four at the back to start it off. The um, next thing to come on to that fits into that neatly is priority priority areas for squad strengthening. So, of the, assuming that there are still incomings to be made, where are they to be made? Is it a question or is it obvious? Dom, what would you go for? So I think in the position we're in, I think we can be afford we can afford to be a little bit patient, a little bit sort of demanding in those final one or two players that we get in. Uh, there's a lot of questions I noticed where people are sort of comparing what um, what Robin's trying to do in sourcing this sort of last striker who's a McNulty replacement to uh, Tony Mowbray trying to sign essentially a whole new team over the summer while holding out for quality in every position. I think there's there's a difference between holding out for a player who you think is going to be the perfect fit when it's only that one player <clears throat> you're looking to sign versus when it's five, six, seven positions you're trying to fill. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, obviously, we uh, <clears throat> need a, probably just another striker I think if we are going to go four two three one, possibly want a striker who can operate in wide positions. Chaplin seems a uh, a, a fair shout, someone who's sort of quick, who's got potential, who's scored goals uh, at a reasonable rate at Portsmouth. Um, given that he's played off the bench quite a lot and had to sort of come in and out of the side, sort of someone who's <coughs> quick, nippy, and a uh, yeah, you can either play up, up tough or up wide. That would be the profile of striker I'd go for. I also think there could 
be a big issue this season in defence. I think that. Yeah, I is, agree. I think that's where people are, are sort of ignoring. There's there's this desperation to bring in a McNulty replacement, and I think if you look at the second half of last season, we were leaking goals left, right, and centre. Um, I think each of our centre backs, they individually had good seasons, but they had errors in them. Most of them, there's this question marks over pretty much all four of them whether they're good enough for a sort of mid-table League One side. And bearing in mind that we've got sort of four options at fullback, who your biggest out against them is their defending, then that could be a big, big issue for us. And I wonder whether actually maybe using some of that McNulty money on getting a leader in the defence, someone who can dominate and bring your organisation, would be a better use of that money than just chasing another striker to throw into the mix. I'm going to jump the queue, if that's all right, and and agree with you. So I think priority number one... I think we can function as a t- almost we can function as a team without another striker, but the worry is that there's not enough goals in there if we don't because four two three one. Once Jones is ready, Biamu is a striker that you would like to see play as an upfront focal point. Andrew is a number ten. Jones is a wide player that's satisfactory. Then you can chuck Bayliss, even though I want him in the middle, obviously Shipley, Alassani. Um, you or you know, there's options that you've got there, so I don't think it's the end of the world. Albeit that I think there's a dearth of goals across those players. However, I'm not sure that I, I. Well, I completely agree with you. I think you're lacking someone in the Ricketts mould who's got a bit of control over the defence. As a, I think Willis can offer a bit of pace. Davis can offer sort of monstrous heading ability and 60-yard free kick-taking um, ability. But I'm not sure there's a player in there who can gel that defence into a proper unit unit. And I hate I, I know everyone will be like, oh, you're never going to sign Virgil van Dijk. But in the way that van Dijk came in at Liverpool and was just like, all right, can everyone keep their shit together for a second? And just immediately they just got better. I almost <coughs> think that's the priority for us. I know that I've basically just repeated what you've said there, but... Um, well, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm going to flag it as agreeing with you. Laurie, Neil, would you like to add anything to that or would you like to talk about where your strengthening priorities would be? Just um, agree. Agree with striker, really. That's the one. Anywhere else, Neil? No, not really. I think we've... I've been looking through this squad over the last five minutes and it, it, it agrees <laughs> with me. So, <laughs> yeah, there seems to be, you can kind of jumble up the team quite well. Um, this is all with the major caveat that we've not seen these players enough, really, to judge and uh, they're going to be sort of peaks and troughs. But I think it's that, it's that striker area, is it? Because none of those, none of those really strike me as being the main man. They're all supplementary strikers in my mind. So, I, I want someone else to come in if we if, just to kind of be the one that I look to for goals. So I don't know who that is, but um, I'll probably be Chaplin if he's um, any good at doing that. But yeah, that's that's me, striker. Lawrence? Um, to start on the positives, I think the midfield is looking very nice. I think we have strength in depth there. Although, with the caveat that if you look at us finishing eighth, then we had a midfield of um, James Madison... Jacob Murphy, John Fleck, Roman Vince <laughs> lot. They're probably not anywhere near as good as those four. But there there's there's a there's a load of them and they're, they're all right. But yeah, what you guys are saying about the defence that does worry me. And what worries me more is that because as Dom says in his preview, Robbins is inherently a defensive manager, if we start then leaking goals with whatever system he's playing and then we become more defensive to counteract that, and yet, but our players aren't quite good enough to even be a good defensive unit, um, and we're kind of sending less reserves forward to score goals. I mean, now I'm just like catastrophizing, but yeah, maybe get a, get a good defender in. But things I like them all so much, but yeah, because um, like you said, they did all have good seasons, and you can cherry pick their brilliant games, and you're like, well, he was a brilliant player for that game. Like Hyam was here. Davies was there and I think Davies is going to be my complete player crush this season because he's just <laughs> after just watching all of those like pre-season um, bits of content the club put through I'm just obsessed with him um, 
and getting didn't get his name on the back of my shirt, but I did as close as I could um, without doing so. Um, but yeah, I also think we need a striker because Biamu, I'm really rooting for him to get 15 goals this year. I'm really like that would be, I'd be so happy for him. Um, but I think he's one of our own. Why do I feel like I'm happy for him? Other other players I judge with like more, I don't know, sophistication. Biamu just feels like like my my cousin who I want to play really well. I, I think there's a number of things, isn't there? One, we have it on good authority that he's the best guy in the world. Like, he's the like the most genuinely nice fella in the world. And that seems to shine through from any time that you see him interact with anyone. Um, but the, as well, it's so, so nice for footballers to come in and get better. Yeah. You just, I just don't yeah. think you see it particularly often that you'd sign a 26-year-old who would show a massively marked improvement through the season and that would change his game to... It's a little bit like Frank Newball. Frank Newball, I think, could have been could have become one of my favourite players if he'd have stopped acting the dick and you'd have just been a big target man. Like, the, like, if he'd have played to his absolute strengths, I'd have been, like, really pleased with him and I'd have thought, oh, this is a really, really good thing. But instead, he thinks he's a player that he's not. And I think Biamu did that really well. I think he started the season... And it was hard to tell where he was at. And then through the season, it felt like through a mixture of coaching or whatever else that went into it, he adapted his game to become like a really, really useful force. And his attitude and his determination and everything went up. And you want someone that's working that hard to get the rewards. You feel proud of them, don't you, I suppose? Yeah. It's, it's a rare Very thing proud. in life, I suppose, that somebody gets the, you know, that someone works hard and gets some good results. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and so often people come to this club and get visibly worse as well. So <laughs> it's not just making. It, I'd be fine if they all just plateaued and like continued the reputation yeah. they'd arrived with. Like Vincenti, for example, he got so much worse as soon as he set foot at Coventry City. Oh, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm adding. I'm having it. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I. Do you remember how, I think we, everyone was like quietly optimistic about the season he was going to have this time last year and. We know what happened, but we can leave it there. I just swear that, obviously, just football's very strange, isn't it? I just don't, I would be willing to bet that the Rochdale team that he was successful in looked and operated nothing like the one that he played in last season. And the times where he was effective is where he operated in that way, where he was on the end of one touch pokes into the goal in some form or another. That would be my... Yeah. <laughs> pointless devil's devil's advocate argument on that um let's go move on if everyone answered that question yeah. yes sir they have, yeah um players that you expect to break through this season uh dom so aside from um tom bayless having a absolutely monster season um I, I think pretty much everyone can see that coming um I'd say ones to look out for as exciting people who are going to win fans over. I think Reese Adesani is is one to watch. Um, I think the comparison is very much with Jody Jones, but someone um, cutting in onto his right foot a lot instead of his left foot. I think at times he is going to frustrate people with his decision making with his final ball, but that's what comes with the territory of a Sort of, being a Coventry City player. Yeah, <laughs> of, of being a fast, skillful winger at Coventry yeah. City in League One. Um, another one, potentially, Brandon Mason. I really like what I saw of him at left-back um, against West Brom in the second half. Looks very energetic, likes to get forward, He's looking to get crosses in. Uh, also, loves a tackle, which is going, oh, to, yes. um, okay. going, going to make him um, loved. He will have errors in his game. He's not the tallest. He's going to be targeted at times uh, positionally like that, but he looks like a trier. Um, anybody else? No, I, like, uh, I like the Very size good. of Jordan Thompson. I, th- I understand that Big is brilliant at that age, so <laughs> <laughs> that, that means he, he must he must come through. And yeah, I want I want to see a bit more of him. If you're going for the height stakes, I'd have thought that you'd have mentioned Corey Adai up front. Yes, Corey up front. <laughs> Um, yeah, he actually, the problem with Corey is, like, 
Burge and O'Brien have got those two. They're, they're still they're pretty much fighting for that spot, aren't they? So I, I can't ever see Corey coming through unless one of those leaves. Yeah, I think that's not beyond the realms of possibility, is it, that one of them leaves? Um, they're going to have to. You, you just think for... I don't know. We talked about this last season, didn't we? I guess if you're O'Brien you, and you wanted to play regularly, you'd probably go, wouldn't you? Yeah, they're both number ones, I guess, at that point now in their careers. So they have to see themselves as number ones. So. And O'Brien's good, isn't he? It's not like he's an awful keeper. I think he's quite, he's clearly capable of a mistake, but every single keeper at that level is you get the impression that he'd be a serviceable goalkeeper for somebody else. He wouldn't be a bad goalkeeper as first choice for us, would he? I just mm. don't think he's as good as Burge. Yeah. Um, is this a good time? Do we, we sponsor Corey or die now, don't we? Mini, mini sponsor. I, our name's going to be underneath his in the programme, which would be nice. Um, I still think we can say we sponsor him. I think that's okay. still um, that's legal, legalese. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're yeah we're proud sponsors of Corey Adai this season. Um, yeah. That looked out, didn't it? Yeah, it was pretty good. Isn't I it? asked him yeah. who's available to sponsor Corey Adai. <laughs> oh, we have an affinity with him. <laughs> we actually like him. Yeah. Um, so does it say the knee lampty show beneath him, or does it say Neil? <laughs> Go. <laughs> Just cool. says Neil. No, I tell you what I did. Using my digital marketing head, I put our web address on there. I see that's yeah. smart. There we go. Yeah. Um, nice. Uh, Laurie, anyone you're expecting to break through? Yeah, so I had to pick my breakthrough player about six weeks ago because the people at 442 obviously don't do their research, so they still get in touch with me because they think I'm a COV fan who actually knows about the the team. They should actually obviously be emailing Dom, <laughs> but they still email me and I'm not going to tell them any different. Um, <laughs> so I picked Chris Camwell because yep. what the hell has happened to him? He's meant to be brilliant, and we just keep on signing people in his position. And there must be something going on with him being brilliant because, what was it, Stoke wanted him, and I don't know, I suppose Connor Thomas went to Liverpool, and he's not really <laughs> good. But still, I'd like some more information about Chris Camwell. Uh, and the other person isn't a particularly surprising one, but I think this could be a massive year for Jordan Shipley. I know he played a lot of games last year, but I think he could make the step up this year and just turn into an actual game-changing phenomenon, not just a kind of workman-like, yeah, player. He had his moments, didn't he? Yeah, Because did. it wasn't, there was the workman-like stuff, and there was kind of the just the, the capability aspect where you just sort of put him there and he he, he seems to fit. But then near the end of the season, in the, in those big games, the amount of times you saw him striding forward out of midfield and suddenly it was him just faced with the defence, and you sort of think, well... Few more games now, a few more, bit, few more goals, more confidence. Suddenly, he could start to really, really believe in himself because the back end of last season, I thought, it really stood up. He was one of the best players in the playoffs. Yeah, I agree, and it's maybe good for him playing slightly in the shadow of Bayless, so he just yeah, gets maybe. time to kind of chill out, and there's no pressure on him to like win games for us. I, I mean, I love him. I really love. Him. I, he completely won my heart at Mansfield away when it was him. Doyle and Bates yeah. got converted into a midfield three, and that game was won. Or well, it was the point was salvaged out of Johnson Clark Harris being really smart about where to go down to give us time, and Bayliss and uh, Shipley just be, being so good on the ball. Yeah, they were able to buy us time all over the place against a Mansfield team that were just gunning for us and that had an extra player. You just you looked at them too, and that was the day for me that Shipley especially came of age. I think he's, I'd be fascinating to see what player he turns into because I think he's equally equally capable of becoming a sort of tenacious Jim O'Brien style wide player who offers that sort of um, asymmetrical balance, if you know what I mean. So you have like a Jody Jones mm. on one side and a Shipley yeah. on the other, um, or like a central midfielder which I guess ultimately is what he probably views himself as although I've got no I don't know what I'm basing that on um, but you just it's a shame that he really he's probably got no immediate future as a central midfielder here because one we're not likely to move to three in the middle which I think is probably how he'd operate best and secondly he's not Bayliss and he's not Doyle is he so I don't think you could play Bayliss and Shipley uh, and equally he wouldn't be a better central midfield option than you know, uh, yeah, there's too much going on in there, isn't there? Yeah. Um, I'm going to chuck in... Now, I'm going to chuck in a wild card in terms of... Have, has anybody mentioned Ponticelli? I was just thinking that, because he's written down for me. 
Um, I'd like to see. Non- I'd like to see more of him. I think he. There's that. Paul keeps saying that at, so, at one point in his career he'll score 26 goals, won't he? That he just will. There's no I don't, <laughs> 26 it, goals. Well, yeah, but you, you know what I mean. Is what's it? Is he'll just ha- he'll just run wild one season, won't he? But then that might mean that then he goes on and scores loads of goals afterwards, or he'll just have that one season. But without a doubt, there'll be a season where he scores a load of goals, and there's nothing to say that it wouldn't be next season. Um, the other player who I believe is good, but I don't really know anything other than people keep saying I've seen a bit of him and he looks awesome. Is that is he Billy J. Stedman? Yeah, his name keeps hopping up. Yeah. yeah, it does. I don't know. I don't know much about him, but I gather he is um, he's uh, a bit of something. All right. I tell you who else uh, we haven't mentioned so far is Zane Westbrook. Fancy name it is a fancy name, isn't it? Um, he. Uh, is one of the many players that we've signed this season that when I actually looked at them, it turns out have never really played any games anywhere. Yeah, he got bombed out of Leighton Orient and they hated him there, so that made me feel a little bit nervous about getting too excited about him. How old is he? He's only about, I think he's 21 or something. Yeah. Why are they hating people at 21? He only plays five times. He only played five times there as well. I asked our good friends Weird. at the E10 Mess podcast, who was a Leighton Orient podcast, they said that they just didn't see enough of him to to make any sort of judgment, but then, you know, football fans. Um, okay, next up. Any players you'd still like to get rid of? Um, Laurie, perhaps you... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, going through the club website, there's quite a few on there. <laughs> <laughs> but the Do you want Dublin? One, Bevan? The one, the only... I just, I don't even want to know how much money he's earning each week, but I, I say it's going to be pretty... Tricky to get rid of him. I'm not even going to say his name. Say his name. <laughs> <laughs> Big uh, Pete. Dom? Um, well, yeah, ob- there's the obvious um, one of Peter Binchanti, who just doesn't look like he fits into the team anymore, and he didn't make much of an impression last season. Um, I imagine if Stuart Bevan can... We, if we... If I found a club for Stuart Bevan, there's there's hope for Peter Vincenti that he can make an escape from here too. So, um, fingers crossed on that one. Um, it's another one to throw out. Um, in case we do sign a striker, I reckon that's that's the call to get Ponticelli out on loan. Um, I just think Ooh. if he is around the squad for like the next six months until the next transfer window while we've got another striking squad if he plays it will be in that late substitute on the right wing role which Rothens seems to constantly hand to him and I don't think that's going to help him as much as six months of football in League 2 or the National League I'd like to see him I would like to see him go on loan I think but that, like you say that then is dependent on assigning somebody who can come in and uh, and well, be your first choice, I guess. Uh, Neil? It's been said, yeah. Pete, see anyone looking at the squad? I think needs to, needs to sling his hook. Other than that, it looks like a, quite a nice squad. Lots of lots of young uns in there. Yeah. Lots of, lots of kids. We're below average, says Dom, in terms of age, by about yeah. two months, I think. Two months, eh? Uh, um, <laughs> point two of a year. But yeah, it's it's basically um, if anyone's sort of looked at my uh, season preview, there's sort of a page with stats of us against the division, and pretty much all of them were just sort of middle of the table in terms of appearances from last season, goals from last season, average age, squad turnover. It's bang in the middle of the road. Uh, very good. Shall we move on to next question? Uh, before I forget, what's your most anticipated away day of the season, whether you're going or not, Laurie? Um, I've got a few. Um, this is actually a disappointing year for me because there's only two stadiums that I haven't been to, which is a shame. But I'm very much looking forward to Portsmouth because I've never been. I've heard it's a shit ground, but that doesn't bother me. Uh, easily accessible by rail. Plymouth, I went once before with my dad when I was... 13 and I thought it was a very nice ground obviously Sunderland because I'm going to fly 
and Bristol Rovers coming up soon because I get to go home. <laughs> Sorry, do you literally mean you're going to fly up to Sunderland? 100%, are you not? How does that work? Because I live in the south of England and you get a plane for like 13 quid or something stupid. From Margs? <laughs> yeah, Margate <laughs> Airport. Margate <No>. Airport. <laughs> Airport. <laughs> One of the London ones. It's straight into Sunderland. Oh, I'll go to Newcastle. Go to Newcastle for the weekend for a, for yeah. a mad one and then pop to Sunderland for the game. Yeah, oh, that sounds sensible. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, go from, like I'll go from Margate to London. Then I'll get a flight from London to another city that I'm not going to. <laughs> <Is it there? laughs> Someone travels, don't aren't they? The, aren't the train journeys that you're going to get to the cities that you're not going to going to take longer than if you'd have just like biked to the, to the north east no, the traveling part is the best bit it's not the well, game yeah it's true where you want yeah, you're to absolutely get to. right that's nice no, that's true Please. um neil adversaries, on, away? adversaries. Oh, right. doncaster away like the leisure center very good <laughs> it's like a leisure center isn't it is there barnsley's the leisure center Barnsley's definitely. Yeah, we had a pint in there, didn't we? Yeah. It's, Doncaster it, might be as well, but I've been there and I don't no, remember Don's it. It's like Teletubby LA. Land. It's mad. There's the lakeside. Isn't that the one? No, I, the, I go there and it just reminds me of like the British Empire. I just feel like I'm. Are you sure that's it, not Barnsley? Barnsley is very no, British honestly, Empire. It, it's just got a whole like leisure centre. It's such a small, sort of compact, neat stadium, but it just feels like you're walking into a gym or something. <laughs> I know what you mean in that it's clean and yeah, like. That's, you, that's my yeah. view, yeah. Not, not a literal leisure... I don't think it is a leisure centre. I may be mistaken, but um, I don't think so. No, Barnsley's fully like chlorine in the air. It's genuinely... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I've really... never been. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, you've re- you really have got to go. I've been there quite a few times because it's Barnsley and we just seem to play them like ever, all the time. Um, but the, they... Yeah, it's like, it's really odd. It's more. There seems to be more people there to take their kids swimming than to watch a football match. <laughs> 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 Um, there and Dom opponents um, for some reason the one that stands out is Burton um, and part of that is a very long story from uh, a few years ago when I was a student involving identity fraud and these citizens <laughs> trains where basically someone had stolen my identity to get on a, a train to Burton I've never been to Burton in my life and it just took ages for it to sort out and then East Midland sent me a letter saying, oh, we've withdrawn a legal action. Sorry, Mrs. Gerron, which is <laughs> not my name. How did they steal your identity? Was that so as they were being accosted? I, I think it was basically, for some reason, Dominic Jones, I'm sure they were someone who lived at one of my former student addresses and then had that sort of that name top of mind. Because it is a pretty random name to make up. I was oh, going to say, on the train, what's your name? Yeah. Like, can, I, can I come up with a, 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 a Dominic Jerome? That's a, I've made that one, yeah, that would be yeah. fine. Yeah, but, but because of that, Burton has always intrigued me as a place, and it's, it seems a fairly accessible journey for me. Scene of the crime. Enjoy yeah. it. Also the um, home of one of the greatest Cov goals of recent years, which was um, Vince Lowe's. Do you remember the, um, yeah, the where he was offside and then he poked it in and then immediately turned to the line and was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Don't don't actually worry about it because I wasn't offside. <laughs> um, yeah, I got it. Felt like we were going to walk the league at that point, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, I know. Just be in top of the league away on a Sunday on Sky. God, yeah. let's do it. guy let's... score. Oh God! Did two guys score that day? I thought it was. He Aaron, scored the winner. I, I was good. I thought Aaron Martin had scored, but it was actually it was Aaron Martin's goal that um, yeah, yeah, like yeah. stole, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder where he's he's at Oxford, isn't he, Aaron Martin? He's Exeter. a player. Exeter. Really? Yeah. He, I think he's had injury problems oh, okay. over the past couple of years. Barely played for Oxford. Now he's at Exeter. He's not a League Two player. Well, obviously legs. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I I can't see past Sunderland. It's just. So, How are you going to get there? Say again. <laughs> <laughs> the train. <laughs> yeah, I'm. On yeah. Your canoe. I'm going to get a helicopter with Noel Edmonds. Get the boat around Scotland. I'm going to get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. I'm not going to be able to get to many games this season. I don't think, but the, I, it, I will do everything in my power. To, I haven't been to Sunderland before, so that's reason one. 
And secondly, just the sm- I mean, I'm a smug asshole at the best of times. We're walking around Sunderland in my cov shirt. <laughs> I, don't, I, I try not to wear a cov shirt on away days, but I'm, in Sunderland, I'm going to have a scarf on, I'll have a badge on, I'll have a hat on. <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> Hill hat, yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, I just love, I just love the fact that they don't like us. It's just so childish. I enjoyed the sort- them retweeting all of your stuff when you know you put that thing up, being like, "These teams hate us now." Barnet and Sunderland, and they really latched onto it and like went for it. I don't think they realised that you're actually like a nice guy, like in the world of football. It was so fun watching you get like absolutely raided by them. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about new signings very quickly then. So, which one new signing are you most excited about? Bearing in mind that I haven't had the the balls to listen back to last season's preview program, but uh, somebody did. <laughs> somebody, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was Matt um, on Twitter who said you should have a look at that. Presumably because it was horrifyingly inaccurate. So I'm not. Lots of Bevan talk. Was that? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure that it would have been Bevan and Kwame Thomas to fire us to, yeah, to yeah. fire us to 14th this season would have been what I said. Um, more classic insight there. Um, so let's not have which one do you think will make the best impact, but instead the one that you're most excited by seeing. So Dom, start us off. Uh, I've already mentioned him a couple of times, but um, Reese Alisani, he seems like an exciting player, a sort of a Jody Jones clone, so and someone who's going to sort of come in and improve, hopefully over the course of their time, and who style of play looks pretty exciting as a winger. He's going to cut inside and run at defenders. That sounds fun, and he's got a brilliant goal at West Brom, by the way. Yeah, I saw that. It was um, very, very delish. I, I just want to take this opportunity. We uh, were very fortunate enough to speak to Ben from Forward Hamlet, the Dulwich Hamlet podcast, who gave us a bit of an insight as to Reese Alassani's time there. And I'm just going to drop that in for you to listen to now. So there you go. Reese came to us in October 2017 uh, after his uh, horrendous injury that he uh, sustained with uh, Crystal Palace, uh, he was released um, and he came to us and uh, was working on his fitness um, maybe for maybe up to a month um, before he actually played for the first team. Uh, and then it became quickly apparent after his debut that um, he was far too good for the level we were at, which was at the Ryman Premier League level. Um, so one below the Conference South, one step below the Conference South. Um, I think he got 17 goals in his first 16 games. Uh, and what really stood out was his balance, um, his awareness of space and knowing when to shoot and when not to. Um, his low centre of gravity probably helped with that. And uh, what also helped him um, rack up the goals quickly was he's quite similar in a sense to Harry Kane in that uh, he's not afraid of getting a shot off uh, from any angle uh, around the around the penalty area, left foot, right foot. And when he does, it's hit with a lot of power and it's hit low and usually towards the corners. Um, he scored, I think, three or four goals in a week at one point. And I, I think they were all pretty much... Uh, the same kind of goal picking the ball up 20 yards from goal working a yard or two of space and then getting a shot off into one of the bottom corners Um, but he scores all types of goals he scored a few tap-ins he scored a few individual goals where he beat three or four men um, after picking the ball up just inside the opposition half um, weaving his way past the men and uh, finding the finding the net from the edge of the box usually so Really, really exciting player. Um, I have absolutely no doubt that he will make it in the professional game. I hope that's with commentary. I uh, saw a goal he scored against West Brom um, recently, which was typical Reese um, awareness of space again and his balance, turning that marker and then uh, getting his shot off right into the corner. That's classic Reese. Didn't surprise me at all. Um, obviously, some doubts probably remain around his long-term fitness, but um, he looks strong. He looks healthy. Um, with us, after his 
really quick start. He did fade a little bit um, after Christmas. I think um, other teams in the league became wise to his threat and they started doubling and sometimes tripling up on him um, and he started getting kicked quite a lot more as well. So um, the goal rate did slow down after Christmas, but nevertheless, he remained a very, very um, dangerous player in the in the top third of the pitch. And uh, yeah, every Dulwich fan can't wait to see how he does with Coventry. You've got yourselves one hell of a player. Okay, so that's a that's a, a, a Dulwich fan's take on uh, on Reese Alassani. Um, Neil, who are you interested in seeing? Do John Sterling? Nice. <laughs> 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 I mean, yeah. we got to. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. He's from Chelsea. He's on loan from Chelsea. I mean, it, he's got to be good, isn't he? Uh, no, I've, I've heard good things actually. Not not me just guessing this time. I, I, I've heard and seen quite a lot of good things about him actually. So I'd, I, I'm just if, you, if we're talking about excitement value, this idea that this kid from the, the Premier League is going to come to us. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him. He's a legit first team player in that good young England team isn't he yeah yeah he's played loads like he's actually part of that like he's not a peripheral guy like he's a guy guy did he win the, the what's it whatever they won that, that I think, group I think, he was part of that team weren't he I, was it the under 17s and the under 20s that won their tournaments yeah yeah, I think so. Then he I was ass- in the Foden team. I assume he was in the under seventeens because he's only under eight. He's only eighteen now, isn't he? I shall bring yeah. up his Wikipedia. But he's he looks like he's quite built, doesn't he? I don't think he's a tiny eighteen. I think he's a he looks like a bit of a man for an eighteen year old. Yeah. Oh, he made the team of the tournament as well. Oh, there you go. There, so there you go. Very legit. Sweet. Um, but again, I sort of, I went, I had a look and I was like, right, oh shit, the season's starting and we've got to do a preview podcast. I better go and start asking other clubs for their take on um, the players that we've signed. And the only three that have racked up enough games to be sort of opinionable were um, Alassani, Agogo and Brown. Um, Sterling hasn't played, I don't think Sterling's played a professional game ever. He's played a couple of League Cup games, possibly. Okay, he has he has reached the Chelsea first team in some shape or form. Yeah, he's made yeah. two. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, fair dues. I actually didn't think he got that far for them. Um, but yeah, this is a big deal for him then, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think that, uh, especially coming into a side where he's going to have to push to break into it, you would assume, as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, who's next? Who wants to throw in their um, their 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 excite- excitement? Laurie, who, who are you excited right. about seeing? Well, I still deem him a new signing, and that's Tony Andrew. Um, Tony. New Tony. I've, I've only seen him play about 10 minutes against Grimsby almost exactly a year ago, and about 60 minutes against Stevenage the other day, and he just looks... He was a bit patchy against Stevenage. He wasn't fully fit, and he got took a knock at the end, but he, his touch is brilliant. Um, his awareness is great and he just looked so much better than all the other shit munchers on that pitch against Steven. <laughs> Everyone was awful. Even they were. Um, and I'm, can you call Jody Jones like a new signing almost? So very excited to see him again. Um, stretching yeah, that definition there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's moment of the week levels of stretching yeah. definition. Um, I'll leave it there though. Just yeah, him, Tony, big tone. The question with Andrew for me is what the fuck was he doing in League Two? Like, if everybody's doing a big wee over how fantastic he's going to be in League One this season, what was he going to have done last season? Yeah. Or is it just that a creative player in that mould is sort of their ability to stamp their game on a uh, stamp their sort of uh, what do you stamp on a game? Impression. Authority, impression oh, yeah. on a game, more dependent on where or how high up your league you are and the players you've got around you. It just seems odd to me that we're, I, I, I agree with you by the looks of it, he's going to be a force, isn't he? But that he, what were you meant to have assumed that if he's really good this season at League Two level, he would have scored twice the goals and that he would have married all the girls and saved the rec <laughs> centre from being closed down? Um, <laughs> he, yeah, I, I know what you mean. 
Um, uh, I'm going to go for a go-go, uh, just because I like a player in that mould. I Again, I'm going to play the snippet from um, Salop Cast, who very kindly um, gave us their rundown on Brown and a go-go. But the, by the sounds of it, he... They had a really good season last season, and the reason they didn't get promoted is because he got sent off twice and they just lost all of the games that he didn't play in. He just is that player, like Vincelo was for us when he came in, that just completely underpinned what they were doing and let everyone else get on with their jobs, and he's horrible. He's just a big meanie who kicks people. Well, that's, did I tell you that I met him? Oh, share this. You did, I think you did, but you didn't go into the detail of it, which is tremendously disappointing. I mean, there wasn't too much detail, but I've, I've met quite a lot of Cobb footballers this summer. Just they've been out and about on the Raz in Lem, and that's where I frequent. So, what are they doing out on the Raz? That it's summer, the summer. Yeah. enjoying they themselves, training, enjoying life. Training. They should be. They should be living like monks. They should be eating chicken and rice and going to bed at seven p.m. And no, I reckon still do that. Ivan Lawton's probably still doing that. That man <laughs> trains all the time. How do you? How do you know that? His Instagram. It just ah. like even when he, he never never really played for us, did he? No, he didn't. I don't think he. And yet yeah. he was just a, a beast of a sort of a, always in the gym, always training, just constantly desperate to be a footballer. Which is a shame. I don't know how we got into him, but um, yeah, it's, I always thought he was going to make it, but never mind. You met a go go a go go yeah yeah I met a go go on the same night as um, I met Jack Grimmer and Davis. And I'd had a few shandies, so I was I was misinterpreting quite a few things that are happening. For some reason, at the time, I thought they all knew me and recognised me. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, I recognised them, and I was the one I went and because I saw them walk into the bar. And what must have happened was I started gestic- gesticulating, kind of pointing at them like to my mates. And oh, look who it is! At the time, I was thinking. Hang on, now they just clocked me and they're walking over to say hello. That's not what I, <laughs> I walked over to say hello to them. But no, I, I, I talked to a go-go. Um, it took me a while to know who it was, but I just I took a punt, said his name, and he, 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 he was very, very sweet. He was a nice man. He, he was holding everybody's drink, which was... Um, I, don't, I couldn't tell if I was taking advantage of it or what, but um, I don't know. But I, I just I couldn't imagine was him... Was him? Us. Are you sure he didn't just work? <laughs> <laughs> Did he end up coming back to yours, Neil? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, all this seems like it, it could have happened. Um, I don't know. I just said his name and he, he, he agreed with me. That's not a good, that's not enough, is it? <laughs> that can happen to anybody. Okay. I'm going to, um, that might, that, it, it must have been him. He was, I've ruined my story now. <laughs> I, I, I am glad. I, I, I'm starting to doubt myself. I'm glad that he's um, assimilated so quickly that uh, they were able to go on a night out together. I don't think I would want to go out on a night out with workmates that I'd only met a few weeks before. To be fair, they were using him as a drink stand, so I'm not too sure whether it was just... <laughs> <laughs> I met uh, Shipley as well. I didn't tell you that. That was another one. That was just after, like, a couple of days after we'd gone up. He didn't want to know me either. <laughs> um, is there more to that? Oh no! But I, every time this is what happens whenever I see a cough player, I'm usually drunk. But I also mention this show. They none of them know yeah, this why? show. Why? Why are you doing that? I don't know. I, I think oh, this think is a good idea. Good. I think let's let's mention it. God, let's see. Let's see if they know what you're on about. And they're like, Nah, I'm got a clue, mate. Sorry. I don't think like, okay. for a team, you'd definitely at least be curious about. I what think I'd notice it. Or... We talk about them enough. I mean, I'm not getting that many people talking about them on Twitter, are they? I don't. I just don't think they've got, and I don't think it'd be good. I don't think they because I think that players read a report that says they got a six out of ten rating, and they go mad that they haven't been given higher. And given that as the benchmark of how displeased you'd be about a thing, imagine listening to Paul every week. They wouldn't, <laughs> yeah. they wouldn't be. Yeah. Our, they yeah. wouldn't be our friends. And I don't think I don't want to bum the players out. That's not what this is about, is it? It's the same we've talked in the summer about getting, seeing about getting players on, and you just think, no, it's just that just wouldn't. No, be no, good. I like the distance, but for some reason I feel like it's validation. I was like, you will listen to me because I run a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> <And it's> like, <laughs> actually, it turns out it means bugger all to them. Yeah, They're I probably... do know that Tom Davies has read the blog though because I made him read it. I sent it to him incessantly, and he read it. So I know he. Don't know about your silly podcast, but he definitely reads my blog. <laughs> yeah, um, he's he's quite a character, isn't he? By the looks of it, 
Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Let me drop in the um, the Agogo um, oh, yeah. review from from Salapacast. Here you go. Hello, this is Dylan Price from the uh, Shrewsbury Town Podcast, Salapacast, and I've been asked to uh, provide a few comments on uh, your two new signings at Coventry, Junior Brown and Abu Agogo. Um, so. Yeah, here's, uh, here's some thoughts from uh, a fan who's sort of seen them over the last two to three years, really, and, and never let our football club down, which is, is probably the best place to start. Um, you've got yourself two fantastic players, as far as uh, my personal view would be, and I think most Jewish Town fans would tell you the same thing. Um, starting with Junior Brown, uh, came in to us as a, as a left winger. Didn't really impress there too much, um, and over the course of time sort of matured into a more of a, a wing back and then even a very solid left left back. And um, yeah, it was was well known for his sort of physical presence in terms of his aerial ability. He sort of, certainly had one of the highest jumps um, in terms of being able to sort of read the game and, and head chances away when he was playing at the back. Um, but also offered a hell of a lot going forward in terms of his crossing ability and also chipped in with the odd goal here and there again. Normally headers from corners and set pieces, which was uh, particularly helpful to us. Um, great man around the club, you know, well liked uh, you know sort of person that you want in the dressing room to keep everybody's sort of spirits up in, in tough times and also someone who can drive on um, the good times as well so yeah for me Junior he's got a hell of a lot to offer Coventry City um, and you know the only fly in the ointment really is is the same as what we'll talk about with Abu Agogo in a second in that it's unknown as to quite how much his injury that he had last season with us has hampered him so for those of Coventry fans who don't know he had a very serious knee injury that the, the club rehabbed him through um, and we never really saw him come back from that so Quite whether his physical uh, prowess and his physical ability that you know we we sort of saw as some of his best abilities is still there. Hard to tell at the moment. I guess you guys would have seen him through pre-season, and from what I know, he's been playing. So you presume that he's got his fitness back up. But um, knees a difficult thing. Shrewsbury have been had some players who've rehabbed bad knee injuries, come back and played years and years. Like Knight Percival, um, who now plays for Bradford, has, has been you know un- unhindered with that injury for years. And then we also had a guy called James Weslowski, had the same injury as Junior Brown came back and it went after three games into the league season and he never really played at a serious level again. So, yeah, I think that's the one thing the Coventry fans to look out for is that is that injury. Um, but as I say, you won't hear a Shoot Town fan say anything bad about um, uh, Junior Brown. He was a fantastic player for us. Um, but Abba Gogo, I think probably, if anything, was more well-liked. Um, we had an absolutely terrible record when Abu Goga didn't play for us. If he missed a game and was suspended or was injured, we basically always went on uh, to lose that game or at least draw. And, and the record with him in the team was fantastic, particularly last year. Um, you know, we almost won every game he played in, and, and the three, three or four that he missed towards the end of the season might have been one of the reasons that it cost us. Um, but he is a superb player at League One level. Um, he's a sitting central uh, midfielder that can just dictate a, a game when he gets the ball. I mean, he likes to pass it on a little bit, I suppose, but he breaks up things. He's sort of like a lower level, Claire McAlealy sort of player. Um, energy to spare. You know, he was our on-field club captain last year, so he has the respect of, of younger and older players around him. Um, so he was obviously well trusted by Paul Hurst. Uh, and, Essentially, across the entire time he played for Shrewsbury Town, again, <laughs> never let us down in any of the games that he played. Um, negatives are you're not going to see a lot of goals out of him. Um, he very rarely shoots, and when he does, it's normally pretty woeful. But in all honesty, you might not ever see him across the halfway line anyway. He really likes to sit deep and just be that shield for the defence. Um, and we had a great defensive record last season, obviously. People have seen we came third, but it was built on a very solid back line. And, yeah, our defenders were really good, but a big part of that was the, was the shield that Abu Gogo offered us. So, um, yeah, he, he was fantastic. But another player with this injury record again, another dodgy knee. Um, and again, we, we're yet to see quite how much he can stand up to the rigours of it. He's obviously come back and he, he did play a little bit um, towards the end of last season. Um, and, and then he sort of uh, sort of got suspended for a very harsh red card. Um, so, yeah, who knows? Hopefully, you know, as a super fan, I don't wish ill on them. And I hope their knees stay in one piece and they, they continue their careers. Um so, yeah, I, I guess that's it, really. It's only real positives uh, to, to come from me personally, and I think that that probably reflects Shrewsbury Town fans in general. So, um, yeah, good luck to them both this season, apart from when we play you, when I'll, I'll be hoping Ryan Haynes has a better game than Junior Brown does at left-back, but um, I'm sure you guys could probably understand why. And, uh, yeah, we'll look forward to, to playing you down the line. There you go. That's uh, Salop Cast's take on Agogo and Brown. Okay, final question, I think. Uh, where do you think we'll finish this season? Very quickly, give us a, a, a very one liney type answer. Dom? Mid table. Uh, Laurie? I think we'll be so deeply folded in mid table, we might actually get lost between page one and page two <laughs> of BBC's <laughs> table. 
Um, Neil? I don't know why everybody's so negative all the time. No, I don't know. Um, I, I think we've got a chance of doing something because football. There we go. That's my answer. Yeah, and I agree with you. But I'll tell you what I would say is I had a look at uh, Experimental 361, which I really like, which is that um, really nerdy statsy blog. And they did a thing where they sort of number crunched and it put us in 10th. And I think that's bollocks, all that stuff. It was said that Accrington would finish bottom, which probably makes sense on some <laughs> level, but the, I think that's quite harsh on them. Um, but the, rather than me thinking, oh, that's what will happen, when I looked at it, I thought, if we finish 10th, I'd be really happy. Like, I think that's really good progression, isn't it? To finish sixth in League Two and then to finish tenth in League One. And it's not to say that we couldn't do better, but I think that's a good benchmark for how happy you'd be. Or at least in my case, I thought the tenth would be quite a nice place to finish, wouldn't it? Yeah, when you when you start looking at it from this point, absolutely. I mean, you you, you can't sniff at it. We haven't... I, the only thing... I, yeah, and that's it. I just... I don't, I don't... You know me. I don't like to um, put any sort of limits on what I think can be achieved. Yeah. And I'm not... So, so I think this season, you know, you set out, you see how this team moulds together because there are, there are some really good players in there. So um, it's there's, just about how they, how they could take on the momentum from last year. Well, there's lots of things that could happen. The, the players that we've signed that have got injury problems, all of their knees could blow up at once and we could find ourselves very short. Or we could achieve some sort of attacking utopia that involved, you know, wrong-footed wingers, Alassani and Jones on either side and a false nine in Biamu dragging players out of position and them two plundering 15 each and Biamu getting 10 and Andrew operating behind and us being like a mag- mega team. You could have any sort of different, you know, it, the, the, it runs the gamut between all those things. But the reality is probably a very boring middle distance, which actually I'd be quite happy with this season. It is quite interesting looking at it in the context of the teams we came up alongside as well, because that's one of the things you cover in your preview, Dom. And yeah. imagining like, I can't imagine us finishing above Accrington because they were just amazing last year. They were just absolutely, they were just so functional in that division. And also Luton have signed George Grant. So they've added one of the best players from League Two to their team and What's have he... kept all their current players. Dom, is he one of the best players in League Two? Uh, well, certainly over the first half of the season, I think he got a little um, burnt out over the second half of the season. George Grant and um, from sound things in pre-season um, he's fitting in very well into that uh, Luton system where they sort of zip the ball around as a little technical midfielders so he could, he could have fun this season in League One uh, Laurie notice how I don't take your opinion but uh, immediately, <laughs> defer, <laughs> immediately defer to Tom absolutely that's what I do I just say stuff and wait until he eventually corrects me <laughs> uh, sorry. I'm not on this pod to bring actual <laughs> that isn't my area uh, um, okay let's uh, let's round things off by doing an actual um, pre-game preview because we've got I still just don't think they should have allowed the season to start this I know it's not even early particularly I'm just not ready for it I, had to, I <laughs> ge- genuinely had to look up who we were playing on Saturday earlier just because I just didn't know but apparently we're playing Scunthorpe um, and at this early stage of the season, Don, what can you say about them? So I was speaking to a Scunthorpe fan yesterday, um, ironbrew.net, um, for a little uh, preview piece for their Scunthorpe website uh, about how Coventry line up. So if you want to check out ironbrew.net for further Coventry preview thoughts to just overwhelm you. In the, in the sea of preview that you're currently swimming in at the moment, um, check that out. <laughs> so, uh, so talking to the Scunthorpe Farm, they are very pessimistic about this season. They've been in the playoffs the past two seasons. Uh, this summer, they've cut their budget a bit, and it's been a bit of a fire sale. Thus, about five or six key players, a couple of key loanees, and the squad is looking very threadbare at the moment. And um, so in terms of the players to look out for, the ones that remain that really stand out are Josh Morris and Dwayne Holmes in wide areas who over the past two years have sort of just driven Scunthorpe forward. They've been their go-to men. Josh Morris is this really industrious, tall, uh, left-sided midfielder. He's got excellent set-piece delivery. Uh, two seasons ago, he was scoring goals at an absolutely absurd rate. Slow down last season, but it's still a key sort of creative and goal-scoring presence for them. Dwayne Holmes, 
was a really quick little winger who was converted to an attacking midfielder, sort of number 10 figure during their run to the playoffs last season and uh, was probably the biggest reason why they ended up making the playoffs in the final weeks. And also, the other guy I took out for is Funzo Ojo, who's a deep-lying creative midfielder who was signed from the Dutch leagues last season and came in and really improved Scunthorpe in the centre of the park. However, talking to a Scunthorpe fan, apparently there's a good chance that none of them could play. From the sound scenes, it might be that one or two of them are risked not being fully fit. They've also got Rory McArdle, who's a big presence in defence. He's potentially injured too. And Lee Novak up front, who's still playing football. And he's, he's <laughs> a big <laughs> lump. He is, uh, he, he's going to be out too. And they've also got their goalkeeper, Matt Jilks, another who's still playing football apparently, who um, is out long-term injured. So it's a very threadbare and skeletal squad they're going to try and throw together potentially for this game. Still a few to look out for. We've got Jordan Clark at right back, who's been one of their better performers since signed for them about two and a half years ago. It's actually Robin's signing for Scunthorpe. He's just been a really solid defender, sport attacks well. That's sort of the good Jordan Clark that we saw with us, who looked like he was going to have a big career in football. And he is at a good League One side over the past couple of years. They signed Cameron Borthwick Jackson, who people might be aware. I know that name. Manchester United, you've played, played about 10, 12 games under Louis van Gaal. And played and then, well. Yeah. But I didn't realise that. He, okay, yeah. But over the past two seasons, he's gone out known to Wolves and Leeds and played about six games. So he's in wow, League One strange. very much for a reason. Yeah, so he's potentially someone who could come very good for them, could be quite a good loan signing for them, but possibly someone who is sort of tumbling through the leagues and uh, so he's still on loan from United he's not not yeah they get players on like six year contracts after they play one game so <laughs> can be hard to get out of a Premier League side once you've made your debut at least on the books um, and then also up front uh, Stephen Humphreys who spells his name very weirdly if you've ever seen that written down it's very awkward for, do you reckon he selected it of Humphreys yeah Probably there's just... no there's no E in Humphreys, which oh, is weird. Well, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's he's been on loan at Shrewsbury and uh, Rochdale over the past couple of seasons at this level. And someone who's looked very talented, maybe hasn't quite scored the goals, but is strong, technically good, quite mobile as well. He's someone who could really come to the fore this season for Scunthorpe. But it's got Olifella Olamola, who was on loan at Yeovil last season, and... Uh, scored a very good goal for them against us where he just destroyed uh, Chris Stokes and it's a quick sort of stocky strong player maybe slightly enigmatic and I think those are going to be the players we're going to have to try and contain for Scunthorpe also they're apparently signing James Perch for this game (laughs) Um, okay I like that bit just chucked in at the end there Um... How do you think we'll do? I think this is a pretty good opportunity considering sort of the momentum of Scunthorpe seemingly, the mood around the club, the fact that they're probably going to be without probably two, three, four, possibly even as many as five key players. It's a squad that's been sort of um, sort of uh, decimated over the course of the summer. They're sort of being sort of youth players who are going to have to come in and set up at the first team. Players haven't got a lot of experience who have been signed this summer. So this is this is the potential here to catch a team cold who are not as prepared for the start of the season as we are. Uh, I think based on what I saw in the second half, certainly against West Brom, I think this could be a game where we're going to see Bayliss and Andre get on the ball a lot, trying to create things. The question is whether... We're going to find that final ball. If it comes together, I can see it's been a uh, classic opening day, possibly even sort of a three or four nil win. If if things come together perfectly, I think that's the kind of thing that could happen that um, that's really going to catch the eye. I think you potentially have got to uh, question whether we're going to 
play that final ball, whether we've got enough goals in this team at the moment and maybe being slightly conservative, this could be a 1-0 win. What's up with it? <laughs> <laughs> I missed something. That was all right a minute ago, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a minute is a long time in football, apparently. <laughs> Uh, okay, very good. Uh, Dom, if people want to hear, if we want to read, sorry, a more comprehensive uh, preview from you, where can they head to? Sidewaysammy.com. Uh, and it'll be pretty much on the front page. The uh, season preview, 57 pages of it all to sink your teeth into. Um, even more detail than we've covered today, if I can be so uh, bold. What's in there? Because it's not just cov stuff, is it? Yeah, so there, there's guides to each of the League One sides, how they're shaping up. You can have a look at their squads, sort of sort of headline stats, how old they are, how many goals they've got and appearances from last season. Uh, looks at some key players, how what formations we line up, uh, what sort of job I reckon Robinson's doing and how it could shape up going to this season. So hopefully sort of an overview of the minutiae and the bigger picture heading into this season. Question, Dom. Yeah. How do you know these things? There's a lot of stuff about other clubs that you just do. You do you watch a load of it. Sorry, oh. it's, it's a lot of stuff. Sort of um, part of it is sort of garnering opinions from people who follow their club in yeah. uh, in as much detail as I do. Trying to assess that with uh, what what I've seen in previous years. Um, those 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 kind of things. Um, watch trying trying to watch as much highlights as possible, and also a lot of just sort of spreadsheets trying to figure out who's in everyone's squad and trying to form an opinion on the players they have in their in their team. It's terrific. It really is, mate. Really good. Oh, cheers. I have a question, Dom. Yeah. Um, are you regretting buying the domain name yet? Because I regret buying mine. It's such a drain on my finances. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got it in a spring deal, so... Oh, yeah, that won't last forever. Oh, they'll you catch know. you up, mate, don't you worry. <laughs> Ten years down the line. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I still I do use the performances to pay for it. That's why I'm still doing them. Yeah, I'll, I'll just start handing out uh, betting tips or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I think that might be everything. Can we do? Oh, before we go, can we talk very quickly about the lovely um, him and me videos that the club put out? We, I think somebody alluded to it earlier, but um, I take it we've all seen them. Yeah. What a, what a lovely joy that was. It's continuing on the theme from last year, isn't it? You know that sort of closeness towards the players. I feel like I know them. Well, it's. It, I think the thing is, is that. It's not always been that there's like a feeling of distance between... Sometimes it's been that you feel like you wouldn't want to know them. <laughs> like in the sort of Marlon King era. Yeah. I don't want to see Marlon King sat by a pool just being like, who's who would be the one most likely to get kicked out of Love Island? And then him being like, yeah, me. I, I, but these players just seem so bloody lovely, don't they? It just, it, it's really nice to follow a team that's just got promoted and then you find out that the boys are all lovely boys. Even Johnson Clark Harris seemed like he was um, like a lovely boy and I'm terrified of him despite having never met him. Um, the only one that stuck out as being uh, noteworthy was Lee Burge, who had less to say than anybody I could imagine, I thought. It's always weird when you get some of those. I know it must be difficult to like just do interviews, but some of the players, because these weren't really interviews, were they? You sort of hope you catch, you sort of catch them in their, yeah. their natural state, but no, it just doesn't come naturally to some of them. Uh, but really, really enjoyed them. It would be nice to see um, more of that if we get the opportunity to. Um, right, I think anything else from anybody? We did ask for listener questions, but in the end, we've ran quite long, and we don't, I don't think anyone needs to hear any more from us. I think we've probably covered an awful lot of them, so... Uh, we can roll them on to next week if we get the opportunity. Um, yeah, anything else? Who's going? Oh. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dom. Uh, it's good to be on the pod. Thank you, Laurie. Cheers, mate. Where Thanks. can we find your... Where is the expensive domain name that you've got? <laughs> uh, it's sex.com. <laughs> <laughs> Very expensive. 
Uh, no, it's the yeah. Lonely Season dot club, and there is nothing new on there yet, but there will be on Sunday afternoon, hopefully celebrating a one nil and or four nil win. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and thank you, Neil. Uh, anything you want to plug? Nah, nah, I'm alright. Just me. Okay. Um, thank you for listening, guys, and thank you to Corey Adai for letting us be. The- <laughs> The principal and sole sponsors of your your season this season. Bye.